In other words, we're heading for a war. There will be a social disorder. And the social disorder will be those who accept being engineered, being doctored, being drugged, being commanded and controlled. There will be the people who accept that. There will be the people who do not accept that. And there will be some sort of conflict. You're listening to The Corbett Report. Welcome, friends. James Corbett coming to you from CorbettReport.com in a conversation that is being recorded on the 10th of June 2016, depending what side of the dateline you're currently on. I'm talking today to Jerry Day, who I hope will be familiar to at least part of my audience through his uh, informative and interesting YouTube channel, Mini Van Jack. If not, I will, of course, exhort you to go there to check out his work. If you like the work that I do, you will probably be interested in the work that he does. He provides erudite, intelligent, informative videos on topics that I think will be near and dear to the heart of many Corbett Report listeners. He's also available at freedomtaker.com. Of course, the links to both of those will be in the show notes for this interview. Jerry Day, thank you very much for joining us on the program today. Thank you, James. Good to see you. Greetings from the far west. Yes, well, from the Far East, I greet you as well. And let's start this conversation with the, the, the point that I, I uh, started the, the contact with you, which was as I was reviewing a video, which I believe I had seen when it first came out, but I was reviewing it because I'm uh, uh, doing some, some work on this topic for the, the website. And I came across your video, Our New Technocratic Lords, which I think is a fascinating and interesting exploration of a subject that I've teased out several times in the past. So people can search my uh, Corbett Report archives for the idea of technocracy and and how science and social control interplay with each other. But I wanted to get your take on this because I think what you elaborated in that video was exceptionally important to our understanding of where we are as a society when it comes to this question of science and how it can and should or can't and shouldn't be used to further various political ends. So let's start with the contentious statement um, that you make at the very, very beginning of your video, that science is a tool of social control or is being used as a tool of social control. What do you mean by a statement like that? How can science be used for social control? I like the analogy going back to, say, 1100 AD, where a man puts on a priest robe and he tells everybody, you know, I pray five hours a day. I'm a priest. I talk to God. God has spoken back to me, and he told me, you should give me your money. There it is. That is is social control with some sort of, I know something you don't. Now, we can't use religion so much anymore. You know, that's, people know what religion is. People know that, you know, there aren't people that are directly connected to God. We're not as gullible as the guy back in 1100 AD who said, oh, he knows what God knows. I'm supposed to give him my money. Oh, good. We know what God wants. You know, that's not, we're not that stupid at this point, or at least we don't see things that way. So now it's going to be, I know science and you don't. And I know what's good for you. I know what's good for the planet. And uh, I'm going to have to control your behavior because I know and you don't. Now, my argument to that is your job, if you know what we need, is not to tell me what to do. Your job is to tell me how you know that and what you know and let me make my own decision uh, based on my circumstances. You know, we're like an ant colony. We're self-organizing individuals. Uh, Ants each make their own decisions about what to do. They don't have a government. They don't have elected officials. Each ant individually does that. We have the same social order as that. We are individually motivated. We are individually driven. We are individually using our internal brains and computers to determine our own actions. And that'll never change. And technocrats can attempt to do that. It's only force. It's only, uh, you know, a con job. It's only a con game. So that's pretty much my view if that gives a good summary. Well, that, uh, that's, a, that's a very good way of putting it, because I think that eliminates a lot of the other questions that people will have. Well, science is just a passive tool. How can it be used for social control? I think you articulated that very well. But you make the point there that, um, that the technocrats can never change fundamentally what we are as human beings, individuals acting through the impetus that's, that, that comes from our own reason and cognition. 
while that is true, insofar as the definition of human being remains constant, the definition of human being may not remain constant precisely because of the types of technologies that are being worked on right now. Designer genomes as a start, let alone the brain chips and whatever other types of ways of tinkering with our wiring may be coming along in the future. What does that portend for the increasing leverage that the scientific technocratic priest class may have over free humanity? Right. At some point, we may have to just force a split on them. If you have technologists who have command of genomic science and who have command of bioengineering, uh, most of us mere mortals uh, can't do anything about that. If they're going to create creatures or um, engineer creatures or combine uh, you know, uh, science and bi biology, whatever the crazy stuff they're going to do... They we're, we're in an extremely high uh, acceleration of scientific knowledge now, and those who do command that knowledge will create their own um, worlds where they control everything. And if you're in that world, you will be under that control. And so there's a split that's required. If you want to be outside of that control, you have to make a very uh, concerted effort to to avoid that and, and to reject that and to refuse that and to resist that. In other words, we're heading for a war. There will be a social disorder. And the social disorder will be those who accept being engineered, being doctored, being drugged, being commanded and controlled, being channeled, being locationally positioned, whatever they want to come up with. There will be the people who accept that. There will be the people who do not accept that. And there will be some sort of conflict there. You'll have to face an enemy and you'll have to take action. Well, uh, before I guess we get into that sort of sci-fi dystopic um, vision of the future, which unfortunately is becoming less and less science fiction as uh, time progresses, perhaps we should confront one of the foundational questions here, which is, can a, uh, a priest, a technocratic priest class of these people wearing the modern day priest robes of the white lab coat with a pocket protector, can that be reconciled with a true understanding of science as provisional, constantly provisional and constantly skeptical of its own results um, and constantly questioning itself? How can these authorities pronounce from a position of authority what is best for something as uh, multivariate and impossible to ca calculate as society, let alone when they can't even get right whether or not, you know, eggs raise blood cholesterol or not. <laughs> these, these types of basic qu scientific questions, which we've gotten wrong time and time again for, for decades. Right. Science is very narrow in each of its given disciplines. So if I'm studying eggs and cholesterol and nutrition and diet and all of that, I know nothing about astronomy. I know, know nothing about maybe animal biology. I know nothing about plant biology. I know nothing about mineral, mineral science. So, so scientists are all extremely narrow in their view. And they have to be because look how deep they're going. There's not enough time in the day to learn at all. So science is... When you step back, what is controlling what we know as science and what might wind up being the control agent in the technocracy? It's not the scientist. The scientist is looking at a tiny amoeba in a microscope. That is not someone who is competent or probably even aspiring to commit social control. They, they're, not, they're not designed for that. They're looking at tiny things. What's, what develops the social control is the technocrat, which refers to the person who's politicizing the science. Now, I have a problem with that because the science is politicized from the beginning. So you don't have science that is objective in broad scope. You have science that is funded by an agenda. And that science and that funding agenda and that control is now completely controlling university research you know, that loves to talk about how objective it is and, you know, how pure science-based it is. Well, who's funding the university? Who's funding the science lab? Who's, where's this money come? Every, every bit, now scientists, science is now uh, required to be funded. Uh, it, it's, we're not back in the old days where probably even Galileo was funded, but, but, but he could, you know, look at the stars and come up with some conclusions on his own. Well, now, you know, all the easy stuff has been done. 
we now have science that has to be funded heavily because you have to go so deep. You have to have such incredible equipment and you know research and staff and all that. So who's funding? You can't fund. You know, it's going to be government. It's going to be military. It's going to be corporate agenda. So there's there's who's going to run the technocracy, and they're going to create and develop science that serves their agendas. And so that's initially politicized science, and then they are going to impose that on us. And by not telling us what the actual science is, but just telling us that they know better than we do, they can disconnect even that politically uh, controlled science from the social control. Because how would we know? We aren't scientists. They're not telling us what the information is. So now we have a political disconnect at the back end. So the technocracy concept is completely flawed on both ends. You know, it, it's politically controlled. It's agenda driven. It's funding and money driven. And so, you know, that's not a place you want to step into and expect some sort of uh, you know, um, rip, no, let's, let's just say uh, freedom type of uh, political construct to come out of that, some sort of, uh, you know, respecting the individual rights. No, no way, not a chance in the world could that happen with what we are referring to now as technocracy. Right. Techn right. Yeah. It refers to a way, of, a means of ruling, technocracy. That's what the word means. Right. And it, that's an interesting response because uh your your point about the the funding i think and the the fact that it controls the the science at the foundational level um um it gestures to the fact that science is less about the answers that we find to any given question um which are always provisional and subject to revision so much as it is about what questions are or are not being asked in the first place and if right. it is being directed towards how can we you know engineer the genome of this plant to to make it you know, more resistant to aluminum or whatever monsanto is working on in their their zombification program, that's what's going to be asked and answered. So right, I think right. that points to the, the way that that control functions. And as you say, it's a question of who is funding the, the, the increasingly specialized research. Um, so this, I, I guess, raises the overall question. Okay, so clearly there is a small group of people who benefit from this in a financial sense, quite straightforwardly, whether that's the military industrial complex, whether that's corporations like Monsanto or whatever that fund this type of research. But is there a deeper agenda to this or is it simply about the money and the power? You'd have to ask someone who knows uh, who's been into deep agendas. Uh, deep agendas are not usually uh, published. Uh, deep agendas are the, the last thing to be released to the public. And, you know, um, I love Catherine Austin Fitz, if you follow any of her work. Here's someone who really has a window into some deep agendas and expresses that very well. Um, so, so absolutely deep agendas control things. I, I think about these billionaires, and you have a certain number of people on the planet who have, at their personal command, a billion dollars plus. Now, why, just because you have a billion dollars at your command, would you not be wanting to further your agenda? Everyone thinks, oh, I'm going to do this because it's good for the world, and I'm going to have a social effort, and I'm going to contribute to charity, and I'm, the charity will take care of this problem that I think is the worst problem. Everybody has an agenda, and now you hand someone a billion or two billion or ten or fifty billion dollars, and suddenly... You know, if they think, you know, there's really too many people on the planet, that's really the big problem. I'm going to put $5 billion toward influencing Congress, and, you know, we're going to have some eugenics here, but we won't call it that. You know, I mean, why would that not be going on? Uh, and so everybody has their agenda, and some of them have a few billion dollars to execute that agenda. So, so uh, that's the world we live in, and um, if we want to uh, avoid that, you know, now, James, I think we're getting to the point – where it's really the disconnect in some cases is the only choice. Um, I, I sold my house a few couple of years ago and decided to make a choice to go off grid. And I don't have a relationship with an electric utility company. I don't have a relationship with a water company. I don't have a relationship with a gas. You know, I don't have rent to pay. So, so I am disconnecting in a way to where I can make more of my own choices. It's not easy. This is a new way of living, uh, certainly for me and for most people it would be. But um, you, you, we, we may look at it at some point and say we 
really should have made that choice a long time ago. You know, I, I'm very involved, I don't know if you know, with smart metering. Now, now, electric utility metering is something extremely different than it was a few years ago. Today, your utility company has, has decided, without your consent, to put on a radiation-emitting fire hazard surveillance device on your home w without consent, without any notice in many cases. And I, I speak to these people all the time because I'm active in this. And I get calls from people who say, they, they did it when I was gone, and I'm only gone two hours out of the week. You know, and they, somehow they knew when I was gone. Well, of course, they know when you're gone. They're monitoring you. And then they come in and they put on this extra turbo digital meter that's going to explode in flames the minute there's a surge and that's going to conduct surveillance on you and, and it's uh, you know highly invasive in terms of uh, recording the uh, events inside your home on a time of day usage basis. Now what people say to me is help me what should I do because I have some solutions at freedomtaker.com okay and I say what we should have done in 1920 was understand that this is not a, it's not a good idea to put this particular service on a distributed grid network because what does that do that makes everybody co totally dependent on this service so people are in this incredible bind i say you've got to get off grid uh, because you know they're getting sick from the radiation being put out by these this high energy density pulsed radiation that these meters put out it's it's weaponized militarized w radiation and of course they get sick and of course it's damaging their dna and of course it's you know even if it's non ionizing radiation they're getting harmed by it and of course that's being denied 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 okay i got to get this meter off of my house okay take it off and get some solar or do whatever you can they say oh no i can't you know i got kids I got to go to work. I got to run the place. You know, we got to have the TV. You know, so okay, you're dependent. And I just tell them at that point, you're just making excuses not to do it. You know, and and you're stuck in this dependency, and you're on that side now. You know, until you decide, at least ten years from now, you'll be off grid or or independent or self reliant or self sufficient. Twenty years from now, when will it be? If you don't have a plan, it you know. Uh, it could be one year from now. Young people have a lot of options because they're flexible, they're mobile, and uh, you know, get a plan. Because uh, if you if you accept this dependency that has been sort of built into our institutions for us, then you're stuck. You're stuck. So it sounds like the technocratic uh, idea is predicated on a centralization of uh, control and resources and distribution of resources so that decentralization is the answer to that? Well, that's one answer. I'm not sure if there are any other answers. Um, I love uh, G. Edward Griffin's term collectivism uh, to, to explain and describe all of that. Centralization, similar concept. Uh, but yeah, it's the idea. It's the idea that we're going to have this efficiency because we're going to make some central authority responsible for this, and we can go on with our lives and not worry about how the electricity gets to our home. We won't know anything about electricity. It, when the electricity goes out, we will have no means of you know doing anything about it. We'll just be at the mercy of our electric company to get that electric power restored to us. We'll give them all the. Uh, responsibility to do that so so it's just putting responsibility out off on others and um, saying I'm willing to pay for this I'm willing to work at this slave job and pay these slave taxes so that I can be integrated into this collectivist system and be dependent on all of this all of these technological benefits and materialistic benefits uh, that I'm being offered so I think I think we're going to uh, you know, when you talk, when you listen to some of the more philosophical people um, who talk about this, you know, we really are at a time when we have to um, expand as individual human beings. You know, we have to say, I'm going to take a little more responsibility. You know, I love one of your latest videos, the DIY open source video. There it is. You know, look, we're going to we're going to take control and command over manufacturing things we need. Uh, that kind of thing is uh, what's going to take us into this. Uh, self-reliance and this independence that gives us the flexibility to disconnect 
from some of these dependency uh, grid. Exactly right. And, and going off grid doesn't necessarily mean you're a caveman. It means that th no. there are incredible things that you can do by yourself these days that you wouldn't even know unless you were looking for those types yeah. of solutions. Again, it's not the uh, the answers so much it is the questions that you're asking or not asking. All right, finally, in an attempt to end this conversation on hopefully a positive note, do you think that the although the technical technical knowledge and abilities of this technocratic class are increasing as the technology itself um, uh, progresses, is there a sense in which their, pro their ability to control the propaganda narrative and their ability to present themselves as technocratic priests that can divine everything has been eroded over the past half century of colossal failure time and time again of these technocrats to actually accomplish anything, such as the energy too cheap to meter revolution of, you know, the Ad Adams for Peace program and all of that nonsense that was sold to the public half a century ago to or more to cover the nuclear weapons program, uh, the failure of uh, basically every, the overturning of everything we've uh, thought about uh, health and nutrition science, for example, in the last few decades, the uh, ongoing uh, fiascos in climate science and, and all of these other types of areas, the European technocrats that were parachuted into to wizard over the European economy that has gone in flames. Is there a sense that they are losing the propaganda narrative and being able to present themselves as masters of the universe? There's a sense they're losing if you're on our side. There's a sense they're winning if you're on their side. It's all the perception. What's, what we have to understand is that the Internet is the new Gert Gutenberg press. The Internet is the new open uh, um, opportunity for everyone to become more self-reliant. You can Google anything. You can learn to do anything. You can change the brakes on your car. You can do whatever you want if you just decide to go out and do it. Now, net neutrality and net connectivity is critical to this. So you have to, you have to work toward maintaining – if you want to maintain control of your life, you have to work toward maintaining – the um, access to information that you have. In other words, if the Internet starts to become too controlled, you need to develop another Internet. You know, there's ways to do peer-to-peer -peer Internets. You know, there's ways to get information directly without going through trunk lines, without going through centralization, central points. So we have to look at all of that. And that applies to our currency, our information, all of this. We have to find distributed kind of peer-to-peer -peer open source ways to do everything. The term open source, I think, is incredibly powerful. I think that is the term that's going to come up and rise in our consciousness more than anything because it's this idea that we as a society could share. Uh, we, don't, we don't own and control and then administer from a top-down hierarchical pyramidal scheme we share and we connect in a peer-to-peer -peer network on everything. And the benefit that would come to that to every individual would be far greater than the hierarchical uh, construct. So we're in a societal change where we have to individually not only look at getting the good information we need and making sure we have a way to get it. We have the technology. It's just a question if it's controlled and it's censored or whatever. And then we have to utilize that technology and we have to... Uh, think of ourselves as a connected part of a an equalized community there are no high spots in it uh, and and when we need something we go out and find it we develop a relationship and we create a, a contract of mutual benefit that's how it works and it's not just looking for a leader that'll provide us for stuff and we'll become slaves to that to that feudal system well, there you go. If the dreaded they are the problem, then we are the solution, and uh, we have to start living it. Well, um, very interesting and very, very uh, wise words there. So finally, let's just let people know again about your work, what, what it is you do, and uh, where they can find you. Right. Well, I've been working through freedomtaker.com. Uh, as I say, I'm very active in this electric industry um, problem with the metering and uh, we have some solutions for that. I have a website, emfhelpcenter.com, where people go and get uh, uh, meters where you can scan your radiation exposures, not only from the electric metering, but other radiation sources, cell towers, all of that stuff. So there's, you know, we're, we're just coming up with solutions here and there. And um, uh, apart from that, uh, we have some, you know, freedom philosophical information at freedomtaker.com. So that's the fun we're having. 
All right. Well, I will direct people there once again. Of course, the links will be in the show notes, as well as the link to the uh, Technocratic Lord uh, video, which we've been discussing. So I, w- I think we'll leave it there for now. But thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us today. James, thank you very much. Good luck. The Corbett Report is brought to you by The Corbett Report subscriber. A weekly newsletter featuring James Corbett's international forecaster editorial, recommended reading and viewing, discounts on Corbett Report DVDs, and once a month, a subscriber-only video. Sign up today to start receiving your copy at corbettreport.com support.